Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So it's another TD4 video and this is one I didn't expect to make. Um, we're going full hop up on my TD4 uh, and that's due to my good friend Keith in the US who sent me all the remaining hop ups I needed for this. I actually had no intention of doing that, I must admit. This has got all the hop ups on that I wanted at the time. But I think basically Keith had ordered, ordered double right at the beginning when a TD4 was coming out just to cover his bases, make sure he got everything for his. So he basically had a full set left over. So it's absolutely awesome. And we've got a load of hop-ups. So as it stands right now, um, hop-ups wise, we have um, front and rear UJs, slipper clutches fitted, um, aeration small bar shocks, the locking alloy diff nuts are in there. And I think that's it for the hop-ups. Um, and now in this little bag, we're going to put everything else that Tamiya have ever done for it. How cool is that? Right, so quickly, we'll just go through all the hop-ups. I'll give you part numbers in case you're interested. So as I said, the car already has the front and back universal joints fitted. It has a slipper clutch fitted. It has aeration small ball, small ball dampers fitted. And it also has the alloy um, diff nuts front and back so that's what we've got so far and here's what we're going to add to it so the first one is a front and rear sway bar um, which is what is that 22037 um, now I did have to um, find the plastics out of the kit which I've added to it for the front because there's a little bit of a you got to cut the body slightly different when the front sway bars on uh, next up we have the aluminium um, servo stairs which I'm hearing don't fully cure the um, the play in the steering, um, the flex, but I do believe it does make an improvement. Um, then we have the alloy rear suspension mount, which is cool, 22038. I didn't give you the part number for that, which is 22030. Um, and that comes with your, your adjustments, depending what setup you want. Then we have the um, rocker arms, the pair that go on the front down here. So they're gonna look rather cool, obviously ball rest. And then just behind that on the um, crank arm, we have this one, which is cool. And then we have our, two, well, three piece steering system. So that's the two arms and to join the two arms is the bridge. So that's that and then we're changing all the turnbuckles over so we're using first one is um, these are 3 by 42s so we've got two sets of them so that's two for the front two for the back obviously that's the camber turnbuckles and then we have the 3 by 32s which is a steering and then we have one of each um, again which is for this turnbuckle here and then the turnbuckle that goes to the steering so yeah, quite a lot to do. Um, I'm not too sure why the best point, uh, the best part, to best place to start is. I'll probably go with the easiest. I'll probably put the steering, the servo stairs in, um, and then maybe just change a turnbuckle at a time, um, and that'll kind of take us through. Uh, I don't know. Or shall I start with swear bars? Uh, yeah, sorry. We'll start with the swear bars. Right, that's the rear on. Um, very straightforward as you can imagine now it does the set comes with um, two different um, variants of swear bar color coded red and blue red being the softer of the two so obviously swear bars anti-roll bars they're, they're designed for certain um, surfaces tracks so I've just gone with soft um, because this right now is more for sure than anything else um, but they can be removed very easily. Um, anyway, as I said, so that's the rear. Now let's, the front's a little bit more involved. Right, that's the front one on. A little bit more involved, just because you've got these plastic brackets. So you've got to whiz the bumper off, screw that bracket in from underneath, and then put the tops on. But um, yeah, you get the gist of it. Pretty straightforward. So that's the front and back's done. Um, I think what I'll do next job is we'll whiz the plastic um, Servo stairs out and change them for the alloy ones. Right, that's the battery strays in. You can hardly see them, really. Um, but yeah, you get the gist of it. But it's a little bit unfortunate now that it hasn't really cured the problem. Um, 
but I'm now looking at it, I kind of understand why it's the flex is coming from the chassis and not so much the brackets. Anyway, while we've got this stripped, I may as well change this turnbuckle. Let's lift the camera up. I'll change this turnbuckle over. I'll also change this one over, and at the same time, we'll fit the what's it called, the crank arm. So we'll get those three bits done next. Right, so that's that front end done. So that turnbuckle's now changed. That second turnbuckle's changed. Crank arms changed, and the two um, alloy pivots are changed. Doesn't have to bring a lot of colour to it. Um, so what I'll do, just while I'm still on the front end, there's um, there's these four turnbuckles to change over, so I might as well do them, and then that's the front finish, and then we can finish the back off. Right, that's the two front turnbuckles on the camber links. Now, obviously, I was going to go and do the steering camber links, but um, we're changing the three-piece steering system anyway, so um, let's get into that and then do the turnbuckles at the same time. Right, that's the three-piece steering in. See, two arms and then the bridge. It's quite involved that you've got to drop the front gearbox off or the front end off just to get this this one out. It, um, the plastics won't slide over, but the alloy ones will for some reason, just obviously a bit smaller. Anyway, um, so I've built that back up. So the next thing now is just to build those two turnbuckles up, the steering ones, and then we can connect it all up and then put it back together. But basically a lot of that's not seen once it's all covered up. Right, that's that front end finished now. Um, so you do actually see a little bit more of the arms than I thought you did. But it's all connected, two steering turnbuckles are in now and it's all feeling really smooth. So we've got two items left to do, which is the rear suspension mount and the rear um, turnbuckles, camber links. So um, yeah, let's get those bits done. Right, that's the rear suspension mount on. Um, just those four bolts, take that rear bumper off and then slide it out, locate it back on the pins. Now, with this, you get a load of different setup options, as you can imagine. Um, I've just fitted N1, which is standard, so basically right in the middle. But obviously we'll keep hold of those for uh, a rainy day. I've also changed the turnbuckles over on the rear. So that's that rear finished now. Right, that's all the upgrades on. Absolutely. I tell you what, it doesn't half transform the car. Um, I'd seen pictures of Keith's, um, but he'd emailed me. And it, it looked cool as hell, don't get me wrong. But again, you know, this stuff in the correct light when it starts to pop, it uh, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it really does change the look of the car. I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised by it, to be honest. So yeah, all I'm gonna do now, um, I want to get the car to sit slightly lower. Now I've already fitted internal spacers in these, but um, yeah, I need to, I've, got, I've got some adjustment here that I can slacken off, which will lower the front end. But I'm going to drop the rear end probably by another 5mm five, five either side and then I'll match it at the front and then that's the chassis pretty finished. Right, that's a 5mm internal spacer in the rear shocks. Um, still quite a lot of clearance though, it's not like it's on its ass but um, it's it's more how I wanted it because it's been sat on the shelf for a while and I, I was just every time I looked at it I thought it's too high. Anyway, so we've still got plenty of movement on the back. And then the fronts, um, but it is more kind of this for the shelf and this setup. Let's turn it around quickly. Fucking mighty fine though, I've got to say. Right, all we'll do now, um, we'll just whiz the um, body and wing on just to make sure that it's uh, it's all looking right. And that's it, that's all done. That took way longer than it should have done. But again, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, it's it's. I don't think it's coming across on camera, but it's really transformed the chassis. Um, very similar to the TCO one I did when I added the bling to that. Um, when I watched the video back, it didn't really come across on camera how sort of blingy it actually was, and uh, how much that blue alloy pops. But um, yeah, no doubt this one's going to be the same. So um, yeah, absolutely made up with that. It's um, it's not very often that I'll do a car and put every hop up onto it. In fact. I've not actually ever done a car with every hop up on it, actually. The DBO2 Leonis build that's coming, I have got every hop up for that. And of course, this one is now finished, but this this was because of Keith. Without Keith, I would have never have put all this lot on. Um, DBO1, my Durga's probably about two, well, probably a half to maybe two thirds finished bling wise but um, anyway yeah um, so I'll end that video here so Keith if you're watching just a massive thank you again my friend 
and uh, thank you to all you watching my dribble if you uh, this is the first time you've come across one of my videos if you give it a thumbs up go subscribe and hit that notification bell for our weekly videos that'd be awesome and as always my friends happy hour seeing. Mm -hmm.